The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. You've been asking for it and we're gonna give it to you. It's time again for the portable N64. <sighs> yes, unfortunately we haven't given up on it. We've been working on it behind the scenes and in today's episode, we're gonna finish it off for good. <laughs> Yes, we have to make some major revisions to the case design, so we have to throw out a lot of the work we've already done, but I think we can finish it now. So let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. I needed some help with the N64 Portable, so I took it to the Midwest Gaming Classic 2017, which takes place in Milwaukee every April. So there are some former BenHeck.com forum members there who've done a lot of work with the N64 in the past, and they actually hooked me up, literally. They have more experience wiring the jumper pack than I do. So impedance is a big problem with this, like just the length of the wires can affect how the RAM bus is terminated. So what they did was they took the original jumper pack and they just very carefully wired it directly to the motherboard uh, with it laying flat like this. So it has the low profile that I need and it uses the original jumper pack, which gives you the best chance for success. Let's see if this is working. Okay, cool, it's working. N64 expansion pack detected. So what they did was they took this old N64, which had two two megabyte RAM chips on it. They removed those and then installed two four megabyte RAM chips. So basically it's the expansion pack built in. So yeah, uh, what I'm gonna do next is work on rewiring the cartridge as I did before. I also wanna make a better heat sink. So I bought some chunks of copper so I can measure this, find the empty spots, measure the height of the chips as well as the thermal pads, then actually CNC mill a custom copper heat sink to bolt onto this board so we have maximum heat dissipation. I even got some really tiny fans that we can use to move air around. Yeah, I'm getting closer on desoldering this cartridge slot. It's just a lot of pins. I removed the metal shielding, so that means the only thing actually holding it in place are the data pins themselves. I just have to go back over them and make sure that they're all clear. One thing you can do is you can use your tweezers and grab the pin and see if it can be moved. If it can be moved, that means it's completely desoldered. So once I get them all clear, I should be able to crack this off and then I'm gonna work on transferring this over to the new board. So I don't have to resolder this, I just have to resolder that. And then once I get it switched over, I'll make sure the cartridge still works and then I will begin hacking the next part, which would probably be actually making the heat sink. That actually would make sense because if I make the heat sink first, then I'll know if some of my other structures, such as the battery compartment, will still work. Because if the heat sink takes up too much space, I might have to redesign other aspects of this. But the most important thing is getting it to work so I can finally put this project to bed. Or maybe a better way to put it is put it to sleep. Okay, I rewired the cartridge slot. Let's test and see if it still works. I hope it does. All right, looks like the game still loads. Expansion pack still detected. Cool. Speaking of things that are cool, it's now time to think about the heatsink. 
Yeah, so I can't just plop down a big block of metal. I mean, I guess I could, but I'll probably try to mill some fins into it as well. Um, the one thing I'm concerned about though, from the end view, is I need to have about, you know, about a quarter inch of space above the chips before I hit these wires. And I'm kind of concerned that it's going to move the cartridge up too high, and then it may not fit with the uh, mounting pieces I've already printed. Hmm, well, there might be enough room. If you look at it from the end here, see the wires are pretty close to the chips, but the wires could also be moved up like that, closer to the cartridge, which would give us some space. And that was one of the reasons I was adamant about making this memory expansion and jumper termination header as small as possible. That way I have lots of room for airflow and uh, heat sink material. All right, I've got the heat sink in place. It's definitely pulling heat off of the chips. Uh, but right now I'm just timing it using my stopwatch. When we were working on this before with our fairly shoddy copper heat sink, um, the N64 would lock up after about 2.5 minutes. So I'm hoping, I'm gonna run this for, I would say at least 20, then I'd be happy because it's not gonna get any hotter than that. It's like a max temperature it will reach, I guess is my point. So if you can run it for 20 minutes, you can run it for an hour. So what I think I should probably do before I move on too far here is um, see if I can implement the little tiny fans that I got to uh, blow air in this direction. So basically across the RAM, which is actually the hottest part of the system, and then out the top where the cartridge is. Maybe we can put the fans on either side of this RAM terminator going in that direction. I did notice though that our existing cartridge mount, not by design, just by uh, chance, fits perfectly over the top of it. I 3D printed this part that I designed, so the air comes in here. And there's a diverter, kind of like a whistle, so you know it's spread out along this long shaft, and that's gonna interface with the heat sink. It's a little bit of a dead spot here. I think what happens is the air comes in, blows out, hits the curve, and more of it comes out on the end but I think it should be all right. So I'm gonna do a test. I'm gonna hook the uh, fan up to it like this. Drop in some screws, hold it in place. Kind of hard to tell what the air is doing. I think it's going in the right direction. Okay, I took this PCB that may or may not have come from a Radio Shack closeout store and I made marks on the back of it indicating where the 3D printed fan assembly is. So the empty space is where I'm going to try to rebuild the power circuitry. So the top of it will have the batteries here going lengthwise. Gotta make sure I don't short anything out when I do this, like that. So we'll have uh, four 3.7 volt cells. So we'll have two pairs in parallel. So it'll be 7.4 in parallel. That'll give us more uh, current and that'll make the batteries last longer. So we're gonna have 3.7 and 3.7 and then another 3.7 and 3.7. So we'll have 7.4 volts in parallel and that will give us longer battery life. Yeah, that should work out pretty well. Um, the fan blower is right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to drill some larger holes through the perf board to make sure air can still get through to the fan. Uh, it'll be partially blocked by the battery, although I don't think that'll make a big deal. It'll probably just go around the battery. And then whatever sort of battery door I build in the back of the unit, I'll make sure there are vent holes in it. So the air comes in through here and it goes out that way. It'll be very shiny. I modded the screen with LEDs instead of the U-shaped CFL, which contains enough mercury to kill a hummingbird. And now I'm gonna switch it on. So we have video, left and right audio going to the screen. We have the screen hooked up to the 7.4 volt power supply because that's what the screen uses. Sony used that a lot, like 7.4 volts, they loved it. And then I have some speakers bodged in just so we, we can hear the audio. The thing that's nice about this screen, it has an audio amplifier built into it, so that's one less thing we have to worry about. So this is pretty much the complete unit sans controller.
All right, so the system functions properly and it has a bigger screen. However, we definitely have to make a new case for it. But you know, it's kind of one big unit here, which is nice. So I just have to kind of design something that fits around this because this is all nicely bolted together. It has all the batteries in the back. Everything is pretty much, you know, it's all one piece. These speaker pads over here got kind of damaged. I might have to resolder those from below. It's about as thin as it can be, all things considered. But what we can do is we can put the controls completely to the sides so it won't get any thicker than this. And we can actually probably make the controls not too deep. That way we can have a little bit of a, a inset to this. So your hands can go here, not necessarily around the thickest part, which is the cartridge and the batteries. Oh, so it maybe feels like the end is in sight. Started working on my redesign of the case of the N64, the project that never ends. Kind of like the forever train in Star Fox 64. Okay, so I've taken the core unit, which you can see here in the end view, and that's uh, this. And this is all self-contained. This works, it just needs a controller on it. So I've drawn a case that's bigger than this on the side. So the size of it's gonna be a little bit bigger, but we can also make parts of the unit thinner because of it. And I've started drawing in the new parts. Uh, like I think I'm gonna revert to using the old analog stick because there's enough room on the side for it. So in my side view, I can look at the depths of that stick. So what I can do in this instance is I can make the case thinner overall or thinner in some parts and then leave the thicker parts only when necessary, such as where the battery compartment is. Kind of like that. Let me just shade it in so it makes more sense for you. So you'll have like the hand grips here and here. But before I get too far with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a foam core test piece out with this shape, just to see how it fits in my hands. Then I can mark off where to put the buttons and then I'll know what'll actually feel good. Hey, so uh, Mr. Heckendorn finished the Nintendo 64 portable gaming system. Let's check it out. Would you like to do the honors of playing the first game? Sure. Yeah, you have the choice of oh, GoldenEye Wave 007, Race. Wave Race 64, or Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark. Um, Mr. Olmstead requested that we play GoldenEye. Oh, look this at is GoldenEye. so exciting. Careful, you only have 93 bullets. Or you have 107 of them are loaded. I think that's how this game works. Oh, did I scare them? Hmm. Oh no. Oh look up, can I strafe? I should play Wave Race oh, instead. Oh no. Select your watercraft. I'm jealous. I want to play this game. Select your course, please. Yeah, let's do dolphin. I like dolphins. I'm gonna assume this is a... Oh, you gotta race a dolphin? Wow. Okay. You're going for two. That's such a fun game. Oh gosh, oh, I missed that ring. I didn't miss that ring. A I ramp. Oh, I missed the ramp. Woo! Ping 10, guys. 
on a 17. We'll bash. Oh we'll bash. Go off the court. I guess you just like go for uh I don't think it'll let me go past these buoys. Oh, it does. Nope. It's some sweet bass. You ran out of time. This thing is cool. I want to take it home and test out Ocarina of Time on this. Because, you know, that would be the true test. Yeah, this thing is very well built. It's neat. Well, that's all the time we have for today. But we finally finished the Nintendo 64 Portable. Have you ever built a portable? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to talk about what your favorite N64 game is, future episodes, upcoming builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. <laughs> I always feel like a sloth is watching me. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Turns out you can't see air. Literally cool. <laughs> this system mostly makes me mad. I want you to go shoot that old yellow dog. As Mario would say, here we go. I don't know if Mario would actually say that. Well, I mean he would, but I don't know if he'd drag it out like that. In our previous episode, we began working on the IoT on Wheels design challenge for Element 14. We started working with the ST Microelectronics Nucleo 64 dev board along with the low energy Bluetooth module. Yeah, and in this episode, Mr. Badley's gonna come by and he's gonna show us the app that he's come up with and we'll also button everything up and take it for a test. It's way better when it's not attached to a bike.